contains strong language and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Oh, that's good. Man would love. Uh, what's up, man? Excel, bro. And now they've even added an encyclopedia. Awesome. I do my shopping at home, pay my bills. And I can learn something new. Prodigy now has a 21 volume electronic. CBN's the only place to see Remington Steel. I'm a man who enjoys impossible challenges. It's what? This morning, an earthquake at 431 West Coast time. Strong, jolting, and rumbling, it pushed its way through th Southern California. I also have to warn you as we begin this special report that what you're about to see almost defies description, and some of you may not want to watch it. 39 people in one house dead, and no one can explain why. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the body of the 20th victim found, a minister from Fairway, Kansas. It'll take a long time to get things back in shape. Some feel they never will. On the other side. The year is 2020. A woman and her husband move into a duplex, sharing the home with two other tenants, an elderly woman and her adult daughter. For the first few months, nothing seems out of the ordinary. In fact, they never see them, and not once do they interact. At least, until. Wait, I don't get it. Is that the kitchen video? This begins seemingly out of nowhere and appears to have no end in sight. Every single time they do this, their dog freaks out, causing their newborn to cry and causing the banging to only become worse. It's a constant back and forth dynamic and things are quickly spiraling out of control. The cops aren't doing anything, the landlord is no help, and so at their wits end, they take to reddit.com to air out their grievances oh, no, please. and to seek advice. Oh, no. At 11.09 p.m. on September 13th of 2020, a yeah. redditor named Peaches and Glitter be an then to and to slash legal advice to make a post titled, Delusional neighbor bangs on the shared wall when our baby cries and nothing can be done about it? It reads the following. Uh, apparently there's stuff behind it, so I'm gonna watch it. I live in a duplex in Washington State with my husband and my son, who is only a few months old. My father-in-law owns half the duplex and is renting it to us, and the other half is owned by an older woman and her adult daughter. My father-in-law has known the women for over 15 years and told us before we moved in that the daughter was mentally ill and had strong delusions on occasion that caused trouble with the previous tenants. The last tenants apparently had to get a civil anti-harassment order placed against the daughter, but eventually moved out when the behaviors never stopped. Apparently the neighbor accused them of kidnapping and abusing their children, and even abusing their dogs. My husband and I brought our son home a few months ago, and we didn't have any issues with the neighbor until about two weeks ago. She has begun banging on and throwing things at the walls when our son cries. She screams at us as well, but I usually can't hear what she's actually saying. You know, over the screaming baby and the two dogs going absolutely ballistic because of the banging. It's absolute chaos and it's made my postpartum anxiety so much worse. 
Every time the baby cries, I experience intense panic, waiting for the screaming and banging to start. We've called the non-emergency police line twice when I can't handle them anymore, and the first time they talk to her and she stopped doing it as often, maybe once every two days. Tonight though, she's back at it and worse than ever. The air quality is so bad right now from the fires that I can't let the dogs out for long to stop them from barking. And the barking makes the baby cry harder, which makes the neighbor scream and pound on the walls harder. The officer I spoke with says we can try to get a civil anti-harassment order placed, but he knew for a fact that her behaviors never stopped after the last tenants tried that, and he said his unofficial advice would be to live somewhere else. Is that seriously my only option? We can't afford to move, but I can't keep living like this. Just move, Lord W. Yo, it's a good video series, man. Let it fucking play out, man. What the fuck? Unfortunately, this post went largely unseen by anyone online, merely generating 40 upvotes in just 10 comments. One user named Lifeguard Ill suggested that the neighbor was merely banging on their wall because they were sick of the noise she was making. She's an owner, so you can't do anything. Your best solution is to properly insulate the wall against sound. From the other point of view, having a newborn baby in a shared dwelling is really shitty to your neighbors from the noise. Just as much as you don't like the pounding, your neighbors hate your crying noises and dogs barking. Maybe your neighbors can't handle the crying anymore. You well, should really look into soundproofing, dead, or your neighbor could start calling animal control and CPS for all the noise you make. Stop blaming the neighbor when you're the one making all the noise. It's an interesting thought process. However, the perspective is entirely valid. They are responsible for half of this duplex and there's really not much they can do about their distaste for a neighbor. As a matter of fact, that was largely the sentiment guys, of those- Guys, guys, you guys are brain dead. Okay, this all comes about intention, okay? Your baby isn't intentionally fucking crying and shit and it's not fully rational. Your response is to intentionally yell and do dumb shit. Shut up, you're an idiot. Those who did see her post, there is nothing she can do and the matter was left at that. Not the ladder. Redditor got a good solution. My first post never got much attention, but the outcome was pretty wild. Short version. In October of 2020, my husband and I were renting in a duplex, where my father-in-law owned the half that we lived in, and a separate family owned the other half. We brought our son home from the NICU in August, and towards the end of September, the neighbor started to pound on the shared wall if she could hear him cry. The pounding escalated over the next two months. The neighbor bought a megaphone to yell through the wall and threatened to rip us apart. I'm not, I'm not she called us child true. predators, and she yelled obscenities and threats until three or four in the morning. The police were called multiple times, yet nothing could be done about it. One officer told us, I'm gonna kill you. See, it doesn't mean anything if I don't actually do it. What? The elderly mother hadn't been seen in several months, but requests for wellness checks were brushed off. The general advice that I got was that as renters, we couldn't do anything. It was also suggested that this was reasonable behavior since the crying baby was probably really annoying. Since my first post, we moved in with yeah, my grandmother yeah, for her safety. Imagine, go, imagine dude, you go into a plane, dude, you're in the plane ride, 
and as the baby starts crying, and then as a grown-up adult, you go, Aah. bro, and then everybody does this shit. Bro, that's brain dead. The neighbor that's ended up busting dead. a softball-sized hole through the shared wall to scream at us and occasionally just stare at us. The smell that came out of the hole was indescribably bad. Our security cameras recorded her coming to my son's nursery window at around 2 a.m. almost daily, just staring and holding her cat. It took until the end of January for the police to be able to enter her property. And as it turned out, the elderly mother had been deceased since at least June, and the daughter had the corpse dressed in her Sunday best, rotting in a dead bolted bedroom. The news article said the mother died from natural causes, and the daughter was taken to an inpatient psychiatric facility. That's it. Because I feel like usually well checks are pretty easy if to I didn't state the obvious. That fabricating stories online happens all the time and is remarkably simple to pull off. To materialize it. In the current online landscape, it almost seems like fake stories outweigh real ones by a large margin, incentivized by online notoriety and the pursuit of upvotes. There was something about this one, though, that seemed eerily specific. The premise was haunting, yet it seemed entirely legitimate. So? There's more to this. In January of 2021, authorities in the city of Richland, Washington, made their way to the home of Peaches and Glitter in response to their 911 call. While there, they encounter a disgruntled 45-year-old woman named Angela Griner through the hole she carved in their shared wall and immediately notice an overwhelming odor. Because of this, they request to be let in to ensure everything there is okay yet Griner staunchly refused. For over a week, she wouldn't let a single soul in, no matter how hard law enforcement tried. However, what she was unaware of was that police were already in the process of obtaining a warrant, essentially permitting them access, regardless of her consent. Now hold on. They need a By warrant February for, 4th, for a well, 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 let's check granted, it. And so Richland PD returns and forces their way inside. And as expected from the revolting odor, the corpse of Griner's mother, a 67-year-old woman named Claudia Kinney, was rotting inside their locked bedroom. She reportedly died from pulmonary emphysema and was believed to have been decomposing inside that home for nearly seven months. Yeah, exactly. Bro, I had a witness check uh, been done on me. They, they got in for free. Fuck. As stated by the OP, Griner was taken to an inpatient psychiatric facility, and since then, there have been no further updates on her status or whereabouts. The duplex, to this day, still stands, yet now bears a reputation forever haunted by the grim events that took place there. The story in its entirety drives home the fact that you truly never know who is beside you, who is across from you. Bro, who is on the other side of the wall by which you sleep. For months, this family That's was it? unknowingly going about their daily lives with the human corpse just feet away from them and completely unaware that their neighbor was living alongside it. At the end of it all, Peaches and Glitter just wanted a home for their family, a place their newborn can grow up happily. Bro. Yet, little did they know what they were getting into and what was waiting for them on the other side. Okay, chat. I love Expo chat, but this one was a bit goofy. There wasn't much to it. Report a blocked driveway 
for a loud stereo. Leave the 911 lines open for real emergency. For anything else, call the referee assistance. Think before you call 911. 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 It's evening in Polk County, Florida. A 76-year-old woman named Loretta Pickard is home alone, asleep on her couch. She had just undergone hip surgery, so she was unable to move. However, her evening was just like any other. It's dark. Probably not. It's I don't think I've ever had toes in it is. And her home rests in a tenacious state of tranquility. Man, this show is dog shit. At 7 p.m., Loretta notices that something is wrong. The smell of smoke awakes her. However, because she's disabled, she's unable to check what's causing it. During this, her husband was away with their grandkids, so she was effectively helpless in place. Meanwhile, the smell persists. Something is on fire. And so, she grabs her phone, dials 911, and explains to dispatch the following. The recording was taken the evening of November 23, 2018. Twenty-two. Wait, is not is not the real phone? one what is the address of your emergency? Pardon? Now one one, what is the address of your emergency? Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I think my house is on fire, and I'm here alone, and I'm on a walker. Okay. Alright, I have a couple more. I just have a couple of questions, okay? Okay. Alright, just to help the paramedic, or the firefighters, excuse me. Okay, these, these questions are not going to delay paramedics in any way. Okay, what type of building is involved? It's a log house with a tin roof. But it's coming from the roof, I think. I don't know. Okay, I have help on the way, okay? These questions are not delaying uh, the firefighters at all, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, I do have some coming. All right, I'm sending the fire department to help you now. Stay on the line, and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. They have the address What's automatically? Okay. okay, is anyone trapped inside the building? Well, I'm inside the house. <laughs> I don't even know if I can get out. Okay, all right, I have them coming as quickly as possible, okay? How many? Is it me? Okay. I mean, my husband's at the ball game, and I can't get him. I'll try his cell phone. Okay, exactly where are you located? Uh, no, inside uh, the home. Exactly where are you located uh, inside right the now home? I'm at, right now I'm in the living room. <laughs> smoke's getting bad. Okay, if it's safe to do so, leave the building, close the doors behind you, and remain outside. Do not try to put the fire out. Do not carry anything. Do not carry out anything that's on fire. I couldn't, honey, if I wanted to. <laughs> I'm on a walker, and I can't hardly walk. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I do have them coming to school. If you're stuck, well, okay, so just let me know when you see them. Okay, where exactly is the fire? On the roof, I think. Okay. Yo, is there... 
Is there no like okay, things to injured? do when there's smoke, like get on the ground no, or something, I'm or not like I'm not injured, but my eyes are a strategy to survive? You could get, you could give her. I can't get out the door. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I have them coming, okay? They're coming as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think she's injured. Guys, uh, I'm just saying, chat. Guys, as a dispatcher, is there not anything, anything alternative to do? Is it just walk outside or you're dead? Is there no in between? This back and forth continues for 15 agonizing minutes. Yet for this entire duration, help never seemed to come. Nevertheless, Roll 15. the fire seems to be growing. Where is everyone? Oh, oh, I see fire now. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, they're here, they're here. They're here, they're there. I'm letting them know exactly what's going on, okay? They are there. Okay. They, I promise they are right there. It's just they have to uh, make their way into you, okay? Okay, but they better run. <laughs> okay, I'm not Okay, stay on the line with you, okay? What's your husband? Bro. Hello? Hello? Sorry, I didn't chat. This guy chats at NPC megaphone. What is your husband's Hello? name, guys? Guys, what guys? What the fuck? Uh? This sound, the sound of flames engulfing the Pickard home, continues for nine minutes straight, with the dispatcher reassuring her the entire time. That help is on the way. Little did they know, though, that on the other end of the line, there was no longer anyone there to hear it. Loretta Pickard, in this moment, and contrary to all assurances by dispatch, had perished in the fire. Guys, yeah, sometimes I feel like I have better comms and positioning with my fucking Uber driver or my Uber E driver, then dispatch with their fucking law enforcement or people, man. What the fuck, yo? What the fuck, yeah? You wouldn't believe it. But for over half of this phone call, help was just a few short feet away. Huh? Firefighters were outside when she was alive and had every opportunity to save her, but didn't. That evening, there were unfortunately no fire hydrants anywhere near the residence, so the crew was left to utilize the reserves in their truck. Instead of putting out the house fire with Loretta trapped inside, however, the crew's captain James Williams used the entirety of the reserves to combat what he described as a forest fire behind the home. This, by default, nullified any potential of combating the blaze's origin, diminishing any possibility of saving Lorena. At all. Well, even if they didn't put out the house fire, why didn't they go in the house just to get them? What? In a case eight on your side has been investigating all year long. 
Loretta Pickard died in her burning Lakeland home, pleading for help, but firefighters stood by and did nothing about it. Well, now her estate will receive the maximum amount of money allowed under state law. Eight on your side, Stacy De Silva reports from Polk County. How much is that? Loretta Pickard's niece tells me the settlement does provide a bit of more. Well, that sounded good, but then how much is that, bro? Since the incident, the Pickard family has undergone a grueling legal battle against the county. As in the weeks following the fire, it's been revealed that James Williams would frequently take Snapchat videos while at the scene of house fires. And allegedly, the evening of Loretta's oh, death was no different. Even further, it's been stated by bystanders that little to no effort was made to get inside the home either, effectively leaving her helpless and alone to endure one of the most horrific deaths imaginable. I mean, that, that's criminal endangerment if I've ever seen it. In the aftermath of this incident, criminal ne neglect the Pickard family neglect has anyway. been given a $200,000 settlement for from sure. Polk County in response to their inaction. On top of this, James Williams has since criminal been fired negligence, that's the one. and void of heartbreak, Sorry. loss, and despair has been eternally left in their wake. No matter how much money, how much action is and has been taken after this incident, nothing in the world can bring back a family member who lost their life during a moment of desperation. It was the day after Thanksgiving, a time engulfed in positivity. However, for the Pickard family, this day will forever be remembered as the last that they would ever spend with her. That fateful night, Loretta's husband, James, lost the love of his life. Their grandkids left a loving home that they would never return to. Well, I'm how much that their is, the next entire number. family had unknowingly sent their final goodbyes to their beloved grandmother. It's that again, they is it? would never see again. Do not hang around the restrooms. And if you see any of your playmates about to get into trouble, get help from a police officer or someone you know. You not only have to look out for yourself, but for the little children who don't know any better and can't understand that some people are sick in the mind. Bro, look like he's a playmate's brother. In 2018, a YouTube channel was born. It's named Vera Koroteva, and over the span of less than one year, they'd upload over 1.4 thousand videos to the platform. Within them, we're able to observe the inside of an apartment occupied by what seems to be a family. And to be honest, not a whole lot seems to happen. They spend a ton of time watching TV and lounging around. And at first glance, it seems like this channel might be nothing more than an archival page run by them. Now, this would make sense. However, there's one small problem. This isn't Vera's only camera. Maybe they, were maybe they were blowing on YouTube on like in like unlisted, you know? This channel, Vera Koroteva, is likely run by not the tenants, but their landlord. 
and they've got eyes everywhere. Jesus. I, I rented two Airbnbs that had cameras in them. I think that Taking was a look at the shit, details though. of Vera's videos presents some eccentric discoveries. For stay, instance, bro. their titles regularly reference names like Putin and Hitler, and often use incredibly abrasive language when referring to their residents and the police. Furthermore, in their descriptions, they can also be guys, found up. going on. Well, guys, in that case, it's legal, chat because. A lot of rich people, what they can do, they have to put, like to put a camera in the house pointing at the lobby. So if somebody breaks in and steals, the only point of entries are full, so the people can be identified or whatever when they steal and get in. Off about useless drunkards, housing the disabled, and something about smoke. But out of everything, the video that really made me realize that something is off here came with their upload from the 26th of October, 2019. It's simply titled, Water Supply Repair. Oh, hell and no! At first glance, it seems ordinary. Upon translating the description, though, we find... He's poisoning it. This. Ah! Oh. Uh, and give her water. She both friends give her water. Brazil has to have a lot of money and they are good at housing. But, and this expense. I'll be honest with you. I've tried to read through this multiple times to glean any sort of logical flow in their wording, but it doesn't make much sense at all. From what I could gather, though, Vera seems to be furious at a judge. They then go forth to discuss legal documents that I believe they requested, and then fantasize about killing them by cutting the judge's throat with a razor. It's incredibly disconcerting, and regardless if the tenants even know that they're being watched, what I do know is that they are, without a doubt, completely unaware of what's going on in these descriptions. For over four years, this bizarre channel has sat like this, completely untouched and unnoticed by the broader internet. With this, their backlog spanning thousands of videos are public, documenting complete strangers living out their daily lives without even the slightest hint that the very person who owns the building they live in is broadcasting them to the world. Today, Vera Koroteva stands as an eerie look into the incredibly bizarre behavior of a peeping landlord. It's an unsettling digital relic, hidden away inside the furthest confines of YouTube's darkest abyss. I have absolutely no idea what compelled this person to do this, and even more so, what caused them to abandon their project completely. I wonder. If the upload rate wasn't enough, they appeared intensely dedicated to their cause, as not only were their security camera videos, but also uploads containing phone calls, conversations, and even trips to real-world locations. Wait, what? With the language barrier stopping me in my tracks, though, unfortunately, deciphering any of this has been ultimately futile. By the off chance any of you watching can speak or understand Russian, I am incredibly interested to learn more about why this channel exists and what exactly they were doing. And I wonder why they didn't get translated for the video people? instead of... And why are they here? Why do the cops constantly pop in? And what are they looking for? Most importantly though, why the hell is all of this public? And who in the world is Vera Koroteva? I'm going to on these videos, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'll link it in chat if you want, you want to know. 
The goal of this video is to make you aware of the potential for differential pressure situations. The key is to recognize them beforehand and make sure you are prepared to deal with them. Because when it's gotcha, it's gotcha. Guys, this is a Delta P incident. Guys, in the first incident report chat, Diver 1 and Diver 2 both perish. Guys, what am I watching? Back in February, we discussed the unquantifiable horrors of the ocean, Earth's greatest enigma, an entire biosphere not made for us. One of humanity's greatest mysteries has always been exploring the far reaches of the deep sea, and in a way, much of what's in it is completely alien to us. Guys, have I seen this before? The peculiar thing about the ocean is that it makes up the vast majority Guys, of the Guys, I've seen this before. Guys, it's the dude who saves him and it doesn't. Guys, it's just, it's just, it, we literally see the detail about this. Comfortable spaces and family life. The point of call. Gulf side pool, cable TV, volleyball, and if you stay for at least three days, you receive a vacation club card with over $100 in valuable discount. Valuable discount. Valuable discount. Call now and ask about our special 49 Guys, they're doing some repair on some on some oil rig uh, pipe, and then they get like sucked in and somehow survive all in a fucking air air pocket in the pipe with like broken limbs and shit. And one guy goes in and gets out. And he tells the company to go save the other guys, and they, they, they don't agree. And no efforts are made to save any of the guys remaining in the pipe, and they all die. It's late at night, and a truck driver named Eduardo Cullen has just checked in to Super 8. His night is unremarkable. It's about as ordinary as you can imagine. He cleans himself up, makes himself a hot meal, and just a couple hours later, falls deep into a much deserved slumber. Wait, you can cook yourself a meal in a, in a fucking in a hotel, yo? Well, that's what should have happened. Well, I'm gonna order it for it sometime. It's it? been two days, and Eduardo has not checked out. A security guard on duty is sent to check on him. However, a do not disturb placard adorns the handle and the room is locked from the inside. No answer. Eduardo, you in there, buddy? Still nothing. He's not there, but it's locked. Suspecting that something okay. is off, the guard manages to unlock the door and make his way in. And at first glance, this room is 
oddly ordinary. On the floor, the blankets lie haphazard. On the table, a handbag, a bracelet, a scale adorned with the name George Martinez, and a photograph appear left behind. Wait. Yet, once he makes his way to the room's rear and towards the bathroom, what awaits him is completely unexpected. Hanging by a suitcase strap, a badly decomposed woman stares down upon him. And Eduardo is nowhere to be found. Okay. I hear the crickets. You know, you would think that this photograph would make this woman's identification a breeze. However, reality has been quite the contrary. Police have since connected her likeness with the woman in the room. Yet, to this day, her identity remains exactly how it's been from the day she died. She is unknown. Unidentified. A Jane Doe. After an autopsy, it was revealed that she had heroin in her system and had passed away by taking her own life. The evidence from the motel room, including the scale with George Martinez written on it, were their only real leads in tracking down her identity. However, frustratingly, nothing ever came from it. No witnesses, no footage, not even Eduardo. It took seven entire years before Eduardo's family was contacted by police. And coincidentally, they claimed that he had passed away not long beforehand. Upon being shown this mysterious photograph, however, they revealed that they didn't recognize him at all. This is not Eduardo and they have never seen this man in their life. Huh. That day, an entirely new mystery was born. Not only was there ambiguity around the actions of Eduardo and this woman's identity, but now an unnamed male has entered the picture. As the years went on, leads on him were all but non-existent, and all they really had to go on was the connection to that scale. Well, that's just, George that, Martinez that's scary, was believed dude. to be his identity. It's However, un it's given uncanny. how many George Martinez's are out there, tracking this guy down in the 1990s was all but impossible. To this day, this mystery remains completely unsolved. Barring one credible tip that authorities received in March of 2021, it's been rumored that her name was Becca and that she flew there from Los Angeles, California. Why she did this, who she came with, and how she wound up in a motel bathroom is still unclear. Bro, bro, However, bro. with the rise of the internet and breakthroughs in technology, this is just, perhaps someday this is her identity can come to light. Okay, chat, this video was, guys, I, I really, I, guys, I really like this video, chat. So the chat was less tangible, more stories, more writing, and not much of a, of a, of a thing. A little bit, a little bit more Midtonian than, uh, personal remark. I didn't enjoy it as much as I usually do.
it is hauntingly yo, mind boggling yo, yo. that not a single soul on this. Okay, I get it. I get it. Jesus, man. Yo, yo.